Spintronics is an exciting new field of research that could lead to much better electronic devices in the future. Spin is a quantum phenomenon that has something to do with electrons and magnetic fields. It's basically what makes magnets so attractive. We recently met a group of scientists from different backgrounds whose collaboration led to an interesting discovery. We met them in Paris at ENS Cachan, so they could explain to us what Spintronics was all about and why the product of their research was a breakthrough. Spintronics is another way to, to, to think about electronics. It's another way of thinking about how you can make circuits to function in the same way, but at the same time use a lot less energy. One of the limiting factors in, in making circuits smaller and smaller, transistors, shrinking them down today, uh, is that they generate a lot of heat. Okay? So we can, we can manage to shrink them down, uh, but we can't ensure that they function in the way that we want them to function. And so the whole idea behind Spintronics is to uh, think of different ways of doing computing in which we use a different property of the electron, uh, that spin, which is like a tiny magnetic moment. We can use a spin to store information, and that spin can also be used to transmit information. So the spin is a property of the electron. It is something that points in a specific direction. That's why it can be represented by an arrow. You could have spins pointing up, others pointing down, and that can be interpreted as information, like zeros and ones in computer science. In a magnetic material, spins that point in the same direction are stuck together like a forest of pine trees, in what we call domains. These magnetic domains are separated by domain walls, specific regions where the spins gradually change their orientation. And so the challenge, uh, really, to understand, if, you know, if, to understand what's going on here, uh, the challenge is really to be able to image such structures in these very, very thin materials. So the key point for our purpose is to design a new instrument that is able to measure magnetic field at the nanoscale. If you ever wanted to measure a magnetic field at the nanoscale, you'd need something that is as wide as a few nanometers, like an atom for example. The energy level of an atom is proportionate to the magnetic field that this atom is subject to. So, if you can find the energy level of a single atom, then you can measure the magnetic field at the scale of the atom, at the nanoscale. Our scientists used a nitrogen atom trapped inside a diamond matrix called an NV defect. Now, if you put this tiny diamond with a nitrogen atom at the tip of an atomic force microscope, all you have to do is shoot a green laser at it. The nitrogen atom will emit red light in response, and from this red light you can measure the energy level and hence the magnetic field at the atomic level. But this is no easy job. We have a single quantum emitter that is used to infer the classical magnetic fields from spintronic devices. And this kind of measurement cannot be realized with standard classical magnetic microscope. Uh, so in fact, this microscope is kind of unique. Uh, it's, uh, it's the only one uh, uh, in the world at this point. Uh, and in fact, uh, people now contacted us uh, uh, because I think it can be used for their research. Here the magnetic sample, uh, right on top of it is the diamond, which is ex excited by the green laser. The diamond uh, emits red light that tells us information about the magnetic field. So then the laser is carried uh, through this path, so here we have the acroic mirror, mirror that reflects the green laser uh, to excite the defect in our diamond. The defect will re-emit some red light that will go through this mirror and be collected and this is how we can read the magnetic field. So this is uh, a magnetic wire in which you have two domains, one up here where the magnetic moments point up and this, uh, in this domain they point down and this region is the domain wall so where there is this transition. Uh, what we do is we uh, scan uh, the tip and we measure the magnetic field uh, above the wire on each point and from there we can detect uh, the domain wall. So what we see on this image is exactly this magnetic field image uh, where we can see the two domains down and up and these domain walls in between. Not only were the scientists able to image the domain wall as they intended, but they also managed to move it and drag it along the track. We were in front of the computers here, clicking start scan, which means essentially the, the, the tip is scanning the domain wall. It takes a time, it's typically it's half an hour for the image, and during the image we saw that the domain wall disappeared essentially. And we repeated uh, this uh, over and over and we, we understood uh, by carefully analyzing the, the influence of the laser intensity uh, that in fact at low power uh, the domain wall was uh, staying at the, at, the, at the same position but at high power it was moving with the position of the tip. 
so it was not expected. We uh, found out this way just by playing with the power. Being able to move nanometric walls may sound a bit esoteric, but this microscope could actually help industrial research. There's an IBM project called Racetrack Memory that would let you read and erase information with Spintronic devices. But for this, you would need to know your domain walls very intimately. And this is what we are able to do now with this microscope. We are able to uh, characterize uh, the stable position of the, of the domain wall, and this is what you want uh, to, be able, to be able to engineer and improve uh, the materials that we use for this racetrack memory.